Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today, as it's just after Christmas and the winter sales are starting and people have had new PCs for Christmas, I thought I'd take a look on Facebook Marketplace and see what was available for me to purchase at a bargain reduced price, and also to see what kind of hilarious errors or additions people have made to their listings and specs for us to basically take the mickey out of. So, Join me and check out some of these cool Facebook listings. Now, first of all, when I say cool Facebook listings, I'm not entirely being 100% genuine now. Some of these listings are downright awful and deserve to be deleted or to be mocked relentlessly. You choose. So what we're going to do is have a look through some of the items that I've saved on Facebook. I've had a quick trawl through, quite literally, and uh, to sort out the uh, the good from the bad, and also some of the ugly, and I thought I'd share some of them with you so you could see what my findings were. So let's go over to the desktop now, and I'll show you some of the PCs which are available on Facebook Marketplace in the UK for you to buy. Okay, so on Facebook Marketplace, all I've typed in is gaming PC. So let's see what we can find. So this is in no particular order, I haven't sorted them or anything, this is as the listing came in. So what we've got is, we've got a gaming PC bundle, £1,500. Interesting, curved monitor, looks okay. Now uh, this is the sort of thing which I would expect to see. So you've got a £550 gaming PC, yeah it looks okay, you can tell it's been taken a picture of in the person's home. They've got the PC, you can see the front, you can see some of the I.O. on the top. Yeah, not a bad picture. Again, this sort of thing, 55, piece, 55 pounds for a PC, computer and computer table. Well, it's obviously not going to be great, it's only 55 pounds, but they've been pretty upfront. There's a picture of what you get, and you can see what it is, within reason. But you also get things like this, which is next to it. So, PC for sale, great condition, 190 pounds. Now, it says great condition, but even from this thumbnail picture, I can see there's a, a bit of a build-up of dirt and dust going on here. So not entirely sure what they were thinking, but still. At least if you can sell something on Facebook, or anywhere for that matter, there's a few things that you've got to do first of all. Now, first of all, you've obviously got to communicate what it is you're actually selling. So if you just say, gaming PC, people haven't got a clue what it is, at least put something else in the title, like Intel i5 gaming PC. At least give someone a little bit of a clue, rather than having to do all the guesswork and all the click work of going in, finding what it is, etc., etc. It's a pain, nobody wants to do it. It's far easier just to read from the initial blurb what it is, and if you may be even interested in it. Another thing to do, obviously, clean your PC. You're selling your PC to people with money. You want to take a person's money. So make it look nice. Clean it up, do some cable management, get some decent photographs, turn some lights on in the room, do it in daylight, take it outside in the garden, take some good pictures, give people an idea of what it is they're actually gonna buy. If you take a picture of your PC in the dark, with the lights off, with a camera phone or some GPE point and shoot, you're not gonna be getting the best results from your camera. So do yourselves a favor, take a decent picture at least. So clean up, take a decent picture, communicate what you're actually trying to sell. And above all, be honest about what it is you're gonna sell. So don't Put some crazy thing like get to a thousand frames per second in 4K for a hundred pounds graphics card. Obviously, you're lying, we all know that. And try and stay away from these crazy things like this will play all AAA titles. Maybe it will, maybe it won't, but that doesn't help anybody. Anyway, let's go on and troll some more of these things. Now, this is another one of my pet hates here. So, we've got some half decent PCs here, and one of them I can actually see is actually someone selling my old case, my Cooler Master Masterbox Lite 3.1 case that I modified the hell out of. And actually I can see it for list for sale there as a new system. And I, I know the seller, so I know that's my PC, or my case rather. So and that's actually a, a pretty good shot. Again, that one there, pretty good. But what is this Fortnite ready PC? Talk about cashing in. Fortnite is a massively popular game, possibly the most popular game on the planet right now. So in their mind, clearly they're thinking, right, people want to play Fortnite, it's Fortnite ready. 
Now that's pretty much like what they used to say in the old days, HD ready, which basically meant it wasn't HD, but it could receive HD and make it look worse, basically. Is this what they're trying to say with the Fortnite ready PC? We'll take a look at that in a minute. So anyway, you get a general idea of what is going on here. There's a whole host of stuff on here, good, bad, ugly, all sorts of things. So let's go to some of the ones I've saved already. Now there's my saved items. Now again, no, in no order specifically, and some of these are good, don't get me wrong, some of them are bad, some of them are just plain awful and shouldn't be on here. But I thought I'd go through it with you in a little bit more detail, just so you can see what goes through my head when I'm looking at these things, and the sort of things maybe you should avoid. So first of all, all right, this one here, this is an interesting one, the top left, £800. So £800 is a fair, fair chunk of money for anybody. And for £800 you should be expecting quite a lot for your money, especially in the used market. Brand new, maybe not so much, but in the used market, you should, this should be some pretty high-end stuff. So, the description, gaming computer. Well, that narrows it down. Most computers can do gaming, but still, we'll give them that. Monitor included, high FPS, and 144 hertz. Now, if you don't know what 144 hertz even means, this part of the listing is pointless. But essentially, what they're saying is, it's got a good monitor that will do 144 hertz. So, let's take a closer look at this listing. So, the blur. GTX NVIDIA 970 graphics card. Now, immediately, Lauren Bell should be ringing right now. £800 they're asking for this PC. Granted, it's a, a partially complete setup by the looks of things, but £800, it's a GTX 970, which realistically, on the used market, should be going for anywhere between £100 and £150, give or take. Now, if you take £150 off of that, or even £100 off of that, you're looking at £700, 650 for the rest of this PC. So unless that monitor is absolutely banging quality, the rest of that stuff in there needs to be pretty good. So let's have a look. So we've got a pretty old Intel i5 45, uh, 4670 at 3.4 gigahertz, which not a bad CPU, but certainly not the current crop and at least four generations old now. So at least four to five years old, it's not the latest and greatest by any means. Now, they haven't gone into any detail about the motherboard at all, so we don't know if it's actually a board which will support any form of overclocking, and the chip itself isn't overclockable, so it is pretty much stuck as what it is going to be. Now, the monitor, they've come in and they've given quite a lot of detail about the monitor. BenQ 27-inch, 1080p. Some people would prefer 1440, but 1080p for gaming, in most cases, is pretty good. And a 27-inch is... Is a quite a good size. I personally like using 27 inch monitors. It's a DVI monitor, but it has got HDMI if you want to use it. Now, for a 14, for, uh, for a 144 hertz monitor, really you should be using DVI or DisplayPort. So the fact it hasn't got a DisplayPort means it's a, an older monitor as well. So so far, this is not looking good. A one terabyte hard drive included, no SSD. Now, who in the right mind in 2018, 2019 is going to buy a 800 pounds PC? So £800 is nearly $900. Who's going to buy a $900 PC that hasn't got an SSD? Not many people. And he goes on to say, or she, has a very basic disk drive, never being used. Now, I think that's probably a communication error. I think what they're probably trying to say is it's a newish drive and it hasn't got a lot on it. So, But we'll give them the benefit of the doubt on that. So brand new 650 watt gold edition power pack, maybe two months old. The last one blew due to a bad extension lead. Hmm. Now, I don't know of many computers that power supplies blow because of a bad extension lead. Generally, the extension lead is probably the only thing that actually survives most failures. So, potentially some of the components may have had bad power supply going to them. I don't know. We'll include a Windows 10 Pro key for fresh installation, so that's worth at least three to five pounds. All wires will be included. Must be hardwired to the router for internet access unless you buy a Wi-Fi adapter. So again, we've been pretty honest, it hasn't got any form of Wi-Fi, so you're gonna have to hardwire it in. Realistically, if it's a gaming PC, you're gonna to wanna to hardwire it regardless. So what else we got? So medium-sized tower, still in fair condition, a little wear and tear. Okay, we've been pretty honest, but again, 800 pounds, really? Only one photo included for a post will present more on request. Now that, to me, is a cop-out. If you're going to sell a PC, like I said, clean it up, take it apart, tidy the wires up, 
And if you're selling it, take a few pictures. If you go to Auto Trader to buy a car, you'd look at multiple angles of the car, inside, outside, dashboard, all those kinds of things. Why not on this? Just lazy. So if you're in the Norwich area, check out uh, Leon and have a look at his PC and see if it is actually worth the money. Personally, I don't think it is. He hasn't gone into a lot of detail of what's actually in there. It's a little bit lazy. It's a little bit behind, behind the current technology with the motherboard processor. If you're going to want to upgrade it, you're looking at a new motherboard processor, possibly even RAM, depending if it's DDR3, DDR4, 800 pounds. Nah, he's off his rocker. So that's enough of that one. So I'm looking at this next one. Now this is an interesting one. This one really, really, I don't understand. 180 pounds, rent my computer out for a week. Really? Okay, so this person thinks that you're gonna pay 180 pounds to rent a computer for a week. When, for probably about the same money or similar money in some of the ones we got below, you can actually buy the whole thing and keep it for a year or however long you want it for. This is madness, I need to check this out. And I've clicked on it and it's gone. So obviously someone's got upset with it and it's been reported and it's no longer there. That is gone. So we can't really find out much more about that. I'm pretty glad it's gone because that is insane. If you're gonna borrow a PC off a friend, fine, give them 20 bucks or 20 pounds or whatever, but 180 pounds to borrow uh, to borrow a PC, that's insane. And especially if you're gonna be doing any kind of banking or anything that uses accounts, what are you gonna do? Wipe the computer before you send it back? Right, let's have a look at this next one. Now, nice gaming PC with new parts, ideal for Fortnite. That's 330 pounds, looks okay. It's, uh, it's an older in-win case, which has been uh, used by, I think that's CyberPower or one of those types of companies. And basically they put their own badge on it. So let's take a closer look at this one and see what we get for our money. £330, selling a nice quick gaming PC. Okay, specs. Now they've laid out the specs pretty much in full there from what I can see. So it's not great. Don't get me wrong, these specs aren't the best. So we've got a Gigabyte Pro motherboard. Okay, could be anything. We would hope it's going to be a 970 board for the AMD chip. It's got a FX4100 quad-core processor, which by modern standards isn't great. It wasn't great when it was released and it hasn't held up very well five, ten years later. So it's not a great start. Radeon R7 360 two gig graphics card. Okay, so that is a, a pretty low-end card, roughly equivalent to a GTX 950. Two gigs really is a little bit low for a gaming PC, especially in 2018, 2019. But, okay, it's uh, it's capable. It will play games at lower resolutions, lower settings, no anti-aliasing, that kind of stuff. Solid state hard drive, fantastic. Doesn't say what size it is, so it could be a 64 gig drive, which is worthless. Could be a 250 drive, 240, which would be much better for that kind of price. Eight gigs of DDR3, okay, that's fair enough. Eight gigs is fine for gaming. 630 watt power supply, again, no branding, don't know what it is, could be anything. New case with LED fans, 500 gig hard drive. So, okay, so we've got an extra space to put our games. Okay, Windows 10 Pro activated, great, another thing. Microsoft Office Pro, mm, okay, dubious whether or not it's licensed or not. And a Sound Blaster 7.1 sound card. Now, when I see a PC with a sound card in, the alarm bells are ringing straight away. Why have they bothered putting a sign card in a PC, especially a relatively low-end PC? A lot of motherboards used to have problems where the sound chip would die, or someone would install a board, accidentally put a riser underneath the chip, and short it out, and it would never work again. Possibly that is the case, but that's one of those questions you would need to ask why they would put a Sign Blaster 7.1 sound card in a motherboard, which possibly has got built-in 7.1 sound anyway. So, play Spotlight on high with good frames per second. Okay, and he's offering to install for free and deliver in the surrounding area. So, not bad. Now, let's take a look at some of the pictures and see if we can find out any more about this. So, again, not a bad picture. The lights are on. It's powered up. You can see it's working, well, within reason. You can see it lit up. You're getting a pretty good idea of what you can get. They've actually shown the box next to it. So, if you're going to buy it as a present, you've got a box to put it in. Pretty good. Now we've got a picture of a screen 
with a player standing stationary and we're getting what looks to be 72 frames per second. Now, this is not a great picture, obviously, and so I can't tell, but it looks like there's not a great deal of anti-aliasing going on there, and it could actually be 720p. Again, we don't know, not a clue. So that's a little bit misleading. Now, here's, oh, here's the install problem. So it's running Microsoft Office 2010. So it's an older version. I would imagine this is probably a hooky copy which has been hacktivated, which uh, if you want to find out about hacktivation and stuff like that, you can click on the link up here, and uh, we had a little discussion about that in a previous video. So having Office on there, yeah, it's handy, but whether or not it's a genuine one, I would possibly say it isn't, but again, I don't know for sure. I'm just guesstimating. Uh, another picture, slightly closer version, so we can see it's actually not a bad picture. It looks like quite a good resolution picture. Uh, we can't quite see what it says on the documents and closed label, but... We can see it's got some USB 3 ports on there, whether or not they're wired or not, we don't know. Um, yeah, not a bad case. Okay, so now we can see the uh, the guts of it. So we've got a power supply, which is ketchup and mustard, which isn't a great start. It's a 630-watt power supply, I think he said. So probably not a particularly great brand, especially with that, although depending on how old it is, it could be quite an old power supply. Who knows? Now the motherboard gigabyte wise, that looks like it says there SATA 2 on the SATA connectors, so maybe not, maybe it is a 970 board, but not a particularly good one. We don't have many heat sinks on the VRMs, and we've got a stock cooler. Again, it's a pretty rubbish um, processor, so it doesn't need a great deal of cooling, but a, a custom cooler would have been a nice idea. So we can just like see the graphics card there, and not a lot else. Oh, and there's a, another picture which is pretty much the same. We've got two sticks of RAM, so at least we can do, do dual channel, so that's pretty good. And that's about it. So we haven't really learned a lot from that. Now, whether or not it's worth the uh, £330 they're asking, I would say probably not. Um, if you split it down, motherboard, processor, and RAM, probably 100 Power supply and the uh, other bits and pieces, maybe another 100 150 So it's probably a little bit over the price. Those cases were actually on special offer on UK Hot Deals recently for about £20. £25 with postage, they were doing a clear out from iBuy Power or some Cyber Power or something like that. So, yeah, 330 is probably a bit of a stretch, but I don't know. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. I'll be interested to see what you think. I would give that probably for value and overall appearance, probably a 6 out of 10. Okay, so this one now is looking like more honest. So, budget low end gaming PC says what it is, it is a budget PC, which will probably allow you to do a bit of gaming. Now, the pictures, okay, it's on the carpet, you can see it's, it's reasonably well lit, you can kind of get an idea. That picture you can see inside, so fantastic, you can get an idea of what's in there, and looking at it, it looks like we've got actually a really nice power supply, that's a Fortran, a Fortran source power supply, which they're great power supplies, and um, it looks like quite a newish one as well by the look of it. And it's got hints of gold on it, so maybe that is actually a gold-rated power supply. That'd be interesting, especially for £120, the power supply. Probably new would have been around about 60 70 if, if not more pounds. So actually not looking too bad, but the cable management, what is going on with that cable management? Wow. Now that is one thing that is really letting this down. I know it's a cheap PC, but spend a little bit of time, tidy the wires up, make it look pretty. It doesn't take a lot of time, and it does really improve the, the, the overall look. So we just look at the back of the case. Now we, we can see it's got a dual slot graphics card. So the graphics card hopefully is going to be pretty decent. We can see all the I.O., get a better look at the power supply. It looks pretty clean and tidy. Not bad at all. Only three pictures, but again, it's a £120, £120 PC. So inside it we've got a Phenom X6, so 6-core six CPU, 3.2 gigahertz, which actually... They do hold up pretty well, even against the FX range. Um, I would probably say that's the equivalent of a very low-end Ryzen chip. Uh, Radeon HD 6850 one gear card, mm, that's a bit of a letdown. But again, it's £120. So far, it's looking pretty good. 8 gigs of RAM, uh, Kingston RAM, 500 gig hard drive, 600 watt 80 plus gold rated power supply, still worth over £50. I totally agree with that. Two DVD drives. So. Actually, that isn't that bad a deal. There isn't a lot you can do to it to upgrade it, maybe change the CPU for something a little bit better. 
Probably not. You could update the graphics card for a two or four gig model and still get a little bit of life out of that. The hard drive's not massive, but 500 gigs could hold a fair few games as long as you don't want rocket speed light, lightning sort of boot ups. And the power supply itself is, is, a, is an absolute gem. So for £120, if you're in the Stafford area of England, that ain't bad at all. That is not bad for a sort of standby machine or just a, a spare. That, that's actually not a bad deal. So moving on. So this one now, gaming PC. Now this is what I'm saying about people should be taking better pictures. Now this thing is clearly filthy. You can see the dust all through all the vents there on the top. They haven't taken a lot of time on this. And this is a 250 pounds PC. 250 pounds is still quite a lot of money to most people. Uh, quickly looking through the specs, it's an FX 8350, four gig processor, 750 watt power supply, local delivery available, Radeon 2280X, uh, three gig GPU. So yeah, actually this, this isn't too bad. I would prefer to see it a little bit lower price, maybe around the 200 mark, but for a reasonable gaming experience with the uh, 8350 and that three gig card, then that actually, again, isn't a bad deal. It's just a shame that it wasn't presented a little bit nicer. And oh dear me, we've got a rat's nest of mustard, ketchup, and all sorts going on there. Power supply actually looks quite nice, and it looks like it's probably, possibly, a hyper power supply or hyper power supply. So it's quite an old one by uh, modern terms. And it also looks like the cooling fan on the back is actually on round the wrong way. Although they've also got the cooling fan for the CPU on round the wrong way. So rather than exhausting hot air out of the back, it's bringing in air from the back and pushing it through, which can be ventilated at the top. The Antec 900 case is actually quite forgiving cooling wise. There's a massive uh, 200 mil fat boy fan in the top, pulling out all the hot air. So even though it is running the wrong way, it's, uh, it's not gonna be that bad a deal actually. That works out quite well. But the cable management and the hard drive positioning, that could have been sorted out a lot nicer. Bring the hard drive down to the basement area uh, maybe ditch the CD drive altogether, and yeah, that could be that could look really nice. Could be a, a really good little PC. 250 still a little bit over the odds. I've actually just noticed it's got four terabytes of hard drive space, so two two terabyte drives. That's actually not too bad. That's that's a relatively good deal. The two terabyte drives, you could argue, 40 pounds a piece. The motherboard processor RAM, 100, 150. The graphics card probably another 60 70 so yeah actually that uh that does add up that's a pretty good deal so if you're in the farnborough area definitely check that out now let's have a look at now this one's sold so that wasn't sold earlier but let's have a quick look at that one now this was 115 pounds remains of a gaming pc now i'm not going to go into too much detail but actually looked all right it was a 650 watt power supply some half decent stuff in there, and uh, for the money, I'm, su I'm not surprised it's gone. So, XFS 650 watt power supply, 25 quid, which is a bargain. Uh, 8 gigs of RAM, 30 quid, good price. And the Corsair all in one cooler, all that kind of stuff. MSI motherboard with this, this, I'm yeah, I'm not surprised that's gone. That is actually a pretty awesome deal. You got some pretty good stuff there. All it needs, I think, is possibly a hard drive and a graphics card, and you're up and running. That is possibly there, the deal of the century, assuming the motherboard still works. Cable management's been done a little bit. They've tidied the wires around. Yeah, I'm definitely not surprised that that has sold. Well done, Alex. That was the person who was selling it. Now, this is my pet hate. I hate this. I really do hate this. Virtual reality ready, 695. So realistically, a PC which is going to be able to do virtual reality needs to be quite a high spec. And normally you're looking around about a thousand pound mark, if not more. So to have this highlighted as being VR ready for 695 is, uh, yeah, a little bit misleading. So let's have a look. So again, it's, yeah, they've shown a picture of a game which possibly doesn't even exist. They've taken a stock picture of a case, which actually isn't a particularly good case. It's, uh, it looks like it's a Dyna mode case, which is probably about 20, 20 to 30 pounds brand new. So let's have a look and see what they're saying. So we Spider-Tech are excited to announce that after some extensive research, we can now build a VR ready system. Now again, it's VR ready, which is kind of like the HD ready thing or 4K ready, which is kind of meaningless. So they can build it for as low as 695. 
with a dual core Intel i3 CPU and eight gig of RAM, as well as a solid state drive for storage. It's perfect to get you started in the excited role of virtual reality. Upgrades available for the serious gamer. So basically they're saying you need to upgrade it to be a serious gamer. What a waste of an advert. Now they haven't stated what dual core Intel i3 CPU it is. It could be anything from up to five years ago or more. Eight gigs of RAM, could be DDR3, could be DDR4, who knows. So for 695, basically that is a pile of poo. And we don't like that at all. That is a totally misleading advert. They've gone into no detail at all, and it looks like they're using all stock pictures. Yeah, stock pictures all around, apart from possibly their logo for Spider Tech. And actually, if any of the people who put these adverts on Facebook in the UK, if any of them are your adver adverts, and I've been critiquing them, please let me know. Let me know your comments. I'd love to hear your feedback, actually, to see um, your arguments. Some of the other ones, obviously, they were good PCs, so no problems there. But things like this is a, is a little bit misleading. And it'd be nice if you could explain what it is you're actually getting for your money rather than just some random price you've plucked out of thin air and thrown on a pretty poor JPEG. So that's enough of that. I don't think I should be giving them any more uh, airtime whatsoever. Now this one here, Think Sensor. Now this is a Lenovo M M700, which is basically a tiny desktop. £650. That's a lot of money for a tiny PC. So it doesn't look particularly big. If you take into point how big the USB ports are, this PC isn't much bigger than the USB ports. So obviously we're not going to have any onboard, uh, any uh, integrated or sorry, we're not going to have any discrete graphics card in here. So gaming is going to be relatively uh, low powered if at all now it's got a display port it looks like you've got two display ports connected up there so that's not a bad thing if you want to use a multi-monitor setup and you want to have a nice little pc um but yeah they're not really getting much information there and a few pictures and what is with the stickers take the stickers off guy what is wrong with you those stickers are in just an awful place and they should take it off you can definitely see that there's dust all over it as well so whether or not it's been looked after who knows and for £650, you'd expect it to, to be in pretty decent condition. So let's have a look what's inside. A 2.8 gigahertz i7 GPU, that's my CPU, a 500 gig SSD, 32 gigs of RAM. Okay, so they're not going to get into any detail. It could be any i7 over the last, I don't know, five years, six years maybe. So they're not really giving them much away there. 32 gigs of RAM as well. What would you use this PC for? To me, it looks like it would be a kind of a kind of workstation or rendering PC. But again, it's not a massive hard drive. You've got not really any option to put another hard drive in. So if you want to do video editing on it, it's not a great idea for that. The cooling is probably okay-ish. So it probably isn't going to be silent. i7s are notoriously quite warm. So I don't know. 650 seems a lot to ask for um, some pretty poor pictures. Although they are lit, so there's not that bad. But yeah, bit of an odd one, that one. Now this one, this is another pretty honest one. 20 quid, computer tower and keyboard. What's not to like? 20 quid. What do we get for our 20 quid? So computer tower and keyboard, 20 pounds or near offer. Oh, and that is it. So we're getting nothing else. We're getting a picture of the front of it which has got what I can see to be a Windows XP logo on there, so it's going to be an older machine. Um, yep, yeah, there's a keyboard and a wire of some sort next to possibly a bag of cat litter. Who knows? But again, it's £20. If it's a computer and it works, then £20 is possibly reasonable. The keyboard's probably worth a couple of pounds. Um, yeah, it's a generally honest thing. They want 20 quid. it's basically one of those things like, right, I don't want it anymore. I can't be arsed to do anything with it at all. I'm not even going to take the side panels off to show people what's in it. I don't even want to list what's in it because I probably don't even know. So 20 quid, just come and take it away. Fair enough. And let's skim through some more. So actually, this one here is actually my old... Actually, no, I'm going to go look at this one. A custom-made gaming PC, but it's spelled gaming with a C, so it's a Gamic PC, or Gamink. Let's have a quick look at this one. So £650, again, should be pretty decent. So it's a custom-made gaming PC, built it myself. Specs. So, okay, they've gone for... Whoa. 
Okay, let's just rewind this a little bit. Now this is a £650 PC. That's 650 So for this, if you went out to Dell, PC World, whatever, you'd get a reasonably mid-range spec PC uh, if you just wanted a tower. So what we get in this one is not great. So we get an AMD A6600K APU with Radeon HD graphics running at 3.9 gigahertz. Okay, not the greatest of CPUs, but functional. Gaming on an APU isn't the greatest of things. Even with the modern Ryzen uh, APUs, they will game, but again, it's not the greatest of experiences. And 650 pounds, okay. So it's got 24 gigs of DDR3 RAM. So that gives out some idea of how old the board is. So this is probably a good five, six year old motherboard. So I'd imagine it's probably an FM1 chipset. So there's no upgrade possibilities whatsoever. If it's an FM2, again, there's no upgrade possibilities from that. So it's essentially a dead end system. 24 gigs of RAM. So it's probably going to be three sticks of three gigs, I would imagine, maybe. Or maybe two eights and some other concoction. Don't ask me to do math. And it comes with the MSI GeForce GTX 1050 Ti 4 gig graphics card. Now that's actually fair enough. Match that with that APU. That's actually probably not a bad shout. It's, um, the graphics card is probably a little bit higher end and you may find some bottleneck in, but that is a gaming capable card at the very entry level. So absolutely fine. One terabyte hard drive. So that's about 30 pounds worth. A 120 gig SSD, 15, 20 quid, brand new. So where they get the um, where they get the 650 pounds from, I don't know. I think they must have probably just thrown some numbers in the air, caught them, and said, "Right, yeah, that'll do. That'll be great." This is not a 650 pound PC. Even new, it wouldn't have cost 650 pounds. Even back in the day when all this stuff was made, there is not a chance. No. Nah. This actually, if we go through it, so the APU and motherboard probably 50 pounds, 60 pounds worth. 24 gigs of RAM, say 30 pounds per stick at best. So the 1050 Ti, 100 pounds. One terabyte hard drive, 20, 30 pounds. There's not 650 pounds worth of value in that system. Not in a long, long time. And it looks like it's against one of those kind of um, older cases. So yeah, this this is not a good buy. Definitely not a good buy. But again. If the person who's, whose PC it is is watching, or you know the person who's watching, let them know. I'd love to know how they come up with that price. Okay, so this is actually MPG Computers. I uh, I do know the guy, and that actually there is my old case, the uh, Cooler Master 3.1, and he's actually made a good job of that. Now he wants nearly 500 pounds. It's a Ryzen 3 RGB Wraith cooler, 8 gigs of RAM, 1066 gig, decent card. Um, yeah, not too bad. I would like to have seen a bigger hard drive. That's probably a laptop hard drive, but I don't actually know. You can see it in there. It's a three and a half inch. Slightly small on the hard drive space. Would have preferred a one terabyte, two terabyte drive for that kind of price. Um, depending on what Ryzen 3 it is. Uh, Ryzen 3 1300. Mm, yeah, see that's in the ballpark of being a, a reasonable price. It's got a Wi-Fi card, Windows 10 Pro, etc. In a nice looking case. I know that because I owned it. So yeah, not too bad. So if you want a PC, MPG Computers, again, I know him personally. He's a decent guy. So yeah, go and check his stuff out. It's all right. And there we go. I am not too sure about the ketchup and mustard power supply. Not a fan of that, especially at this price point. It's only a CX430. So it's kind of Corsair's it's lower end. So it's not a great power supply, but it's certainly uh, capable of doing the job. But the uh, the Kesha mustard cables kind of nah. It's twenty eighteen. Come on. So here we go. Another Fortnite ready PC. Now this one I've already seen. It is actually the same deal from uh, Spider Tech Computers or whoever they are. Again, stock image of a case with a background of Fortnite. Fortnite season five. We're actually on season seven, so you're a bit behind the times. Uh, gaming PC. What have we got? So it's a gaming PC with virtually no specifications whatsoever. Again, absolutely useless advert. Not gonna give them any more airtime at all. Uh, this is an interesting one. 1,300 pounds for a gaming PC. 
Now, if you're spending that sort of money, you're expecting something pretty awesome. So this is an amazing game PC that will run anything. But I have no time to finish, so looking to sell. So it's an unfinished gaming PC, and it's £1,300. Wow, okay. So we've got a Crystal uh, 570 RGB mid-tower, nice case. We've got a GeForce 1080 8 gig Gaming X from MSI. It's a, a decent graphics card. We're looking at a i5 8th gen, which is not bad for gaming, absolutely fine. Uh, actually, a pretty decent CPU. A MSI gaming motherboard. Arctic Freezer 33 Esports 1, good cooler. 500, uh, sorry, 250 SSD, some rip jewels, only 8 gigs of RAM. And they are not really saying a great deal else there. So no mention of the power supply. And, okay, so they're saying there, no time to finish, look and sell brand new parts. So if you go to PC Part Picker, which I may well do later, check out what the prices are. So the case, I would say is probably about 130, the GTX 1080, 500 maybe. CPU, motherboard, probably another 300. 1300 pounds seems a lot of money for this system. Um, I'd love to be proved wrong. Again, the GTX 1080 is not even a TI, so it's a little bit behind the curve. Don't get me wrong, it looks nice and it's all new parts allegedly, but you can't, you can't ask for new money for used stuff. Regardless, it may be brand spanking new, but you just can't ask that. There is a thing called depreciation. If you wanted warranties on any of that stuff, generally you're gonna to have to go through the original person that bought it and get them to do it via their credit card company or receipts or whatever it may be. Uh, yeah, not a, not great. I would imagine there's probably, if that was going for a thousand, maybe less, I I think people would be interested, but eight gigs of RAM on a 1300 pound system, wow. Okay, so this, Here's a great one, £900 gaming PC. So again, we're in the same ballpark. This is an expensive PC, £900 is a lot of money. Now, from the picture, we can tell that it's got a ROG graphics card because the ROG's logo is lit up, lit up. Now, this is the only picture, there's no other pictures. So this is it, this is what we get. So for you to make a decision whether you want to buy this £900 PC against all the others that are on the market, this is your only point of reference and obviously the specs. So what do we get for our £900? Well, we obviously get a fractal design power supply because we can see that. We definitely get an ROG graphics card. We're not sure which one because it's just too damn dark and there's cables everywhere, so we can't really tell. There's a hard disk drive in there we can see, but it could be pretty much anything in there. So it's an i7 4770K, which isn't a very new piece, uh, CPU. Again, we're looking four, five generations old now. 32 gigs of RAM, LPX DDR3, so the RAM's out of date, the motherboard's gonna be out of date, CPU's pretty much out of date. The 1080 Strix, great card, don't get me wrong, excellent, 1080 is always a good choice. But can we work out 900 pounds worth of value out of this PC when we can't even see what case it's in, or even if the case has got any sides to it, it could come like that. Again, take more pictures, turn the lights on, go into more detail, let us know what's in there. The only details we get are that it's a Gigabyte Z87 motherboard on 1150 socket, which obviously is pretty much defunct now, and it runs like a dream. Well, for £900, frankly, I would expect it to run like a dream, a very nice dream, a dream like you've won the lottery so you can spend money on anything, but £900 mm, is a bit overpriced. Actually, quite a lot overpriced. It would have been nice to know more information about it and get a better view of it, work out what case it is. Like I, I can't really tell what case that is at all. It looks like, no, I'm not even gonna head, I'm not even gonna offer up a, a case. It could be anything, which again is not great. If you're looking at buying a PC, kind of the case is actually pretty important. It's nice to see what you're getting. Okay, so this is the part in the video where everything goes wrong and for some reason, my capture software starts dropping loads of frames on my trusty Logitech camera which is not so trusty at the moment. So let's get back into it. Okay, so for the last part of this video, I wanna go through basically what you definitely shouldn't do when you're trying to sell a PC. So there's two PCs on here, which immediately kind of 
just rile me. So this one here, hundred pounds gaming PC. Let's take a look at it. Okay, so essentially, what can you say? It's a dual core gaming PC. It can run games like Fortnite at fifty frames per second, and has a GTX six forty in it and an MSI motherboard. So virtually no information. An MSI motherboard. MSI have made millions of motherboards. Well, yeah, they probably have manufactured millions of motherboards, but they sell hundreds of different uh, SKUs of motherboards. So it could be literally anything in there. If it's a dual core gaming PC, it could be AMD, it could be Intel, it could be anything. So they're not going into any real detail. And if we flick through the pictures, again, there's not a lot of uh, description there. We can see just about it's a Philips PC, but other than that, you could probably get in a bit closer, maybe find out what model it is and what specs it was. But it's quite an old PC. Chances are the specs that were originally in it when it was made probably aren't in it now, so you, you can't be sure. So you've not got a lot of information. And there's 100 pounds. It's quite a gamble. Now you can see there is a hard disk drive. Again, no mention of that in the specifications, whether or not they're gonna be taken out to keep their personal information. Who knows? It's a scheme, one of those things. It probably is a great little PC, and for 100 pounds, if it gets you up and running, you can have a little bit of a play. Ideal for younger kids who are just getting into PCs or PC gaming. It's definitely cheaper than a console. Um, possibly more flexible. Again, we don't know because you don't really know what's inside there. So it's really difficult to make that informed decision. It really does frustrate me when I see things like this. Like I say, it probably is a great little PC. And the last thing that the seller probably wants is person after person after person sending a messenger uh, requests and asking how much RAM is in it? How big is the hard drive? what operating systems on it, all that kind of stuff. It's a lot easier just to put it in the description when you do it. People know where they stand. If they want to contact you then, great. It's chance are they are a prospective buyer. They're going to put some money in your hand or they're going to offer you some money, a little bit less, to have the PC. But put the information in the advert. That's all it takes. It makes things a lot easier. Anyway, I hope that sells. Now, the last one, this one, this one is class. This is class. Now it says here, Sunvision Gaming PC Case. Now Sunvision, if you don't know who they are, are kind of like a budget brand. They make keyboards. I've got the Sunvision Rio keyboard with the trackball. Fantastic keyboard. A little bit plasticky, but it does its job and it's, it works. It, it does the job. But they basically do budget stuff. So when I see eighty-five pounds Sunvision Gaming PC Case, immediately I'm thinking, what is this all about? Now, most people will probably just pass it by, won't give it a second look. But I'm intrigued with this, because the picture, the main thumbnail picture, is basically the specs of the case. But for £85, I would be pretty sure there's actually going to be something inside that case, or at least I would hope so. So let's take a look at it. So, again, initial picture. So let's read the description. I've only used once, have the box. I got it with, it also has Windows Vista installed on it. So yes, there is a computer inside it as kind of we suspected. 168 hard drive, two gigs of RAM, an Intel processor, as well as some LED fans. Now LED fans come with the case anyway, so I think that's probably integral. Let's have a flick through the pictures. So it's actually not a bad looking case. Again, they've taken it. There's actually relatively good light there. So you can see the PC. There's a lot of stuff in the background distracting, so you could do without that being there. And also the um, the blanking plates for the hard uh, for the CD drives, CD-ROM drives. Two of them you can see are clearly pushed in. All it would take is like a, a toothpick or a pin or something like that. Just push them back out. Put them so they're straight. It just looks like you've uh, taken a bit more care and effort over it. But other than that, it's, it's a nice looking case. I think I've actually had one of these before. I think it's about a 25, 30 pound case as a... Uh, as a retail product, maybe 35 at a push, depending on where you get it from. So 35 pounds, take away the 85 pounds. So they're saying roughly sort of 45, 50 pounds for the PC that's inside it. So let's see. Oh wow, that's uh, that's quite a, a cable mess. Now that's again one thing. If you're going to take the side panel off and take the effort to take a picture, it's probably a good idea to tidy up the cables if you can. If you're not too sure, maybe try and avoid some of the cables in the picture, but it's not really rocket science. Just get some Velcro or some cable ties or even some of those little twist sticks you have in the kitchen. 
and, and yeah, just uh, just try and tidy it up a bit. It's difficult to do, and again, it's not a very expensive PC, it's £85, but it's expensive enough for someone to want you to have taken the care and attention to it. Uh, it's not cheap enough, really, at that price, for someone to say, oh, what the hell. It's not the kind of thing you could buy, tidy it up, and flip it for more money, really. It's, it, there isn't any any profit in it, I don't think, for to be to be flipped. Um, well, it looks like we get... Well, it doesn't say it in the description, but it looks like they're including a mouse. So, okay, that's another little bit of added value. And probably a keyboard as well. So, again, so a few more pounds. It's not a great deal. And it's nice that I've actually done a close-up of the motherboard. So, actually, not a bad resolution image with pretty good lighting. So, you can see mostly what's going on. I can't really tell what motherboard it is, apart from it's a Foxconn. Um, it's an Intel CPU. There's not really a great deal there to give it away. I can't actually see a model number, which is a shame. But again, it's got an IDE port on the motherboard, which uh, actually isn't being used. So it means it's got a SATA CD drive or DVD drive. Difficult to put an age on it. Um, difficult to know actually what is actually in it. And with only two gigs of RAM, it is, well, it'll run Vista okay. Vista was a bit of a hog. We like to have four gigs of RAM, really. Um, it will run but it's, it's not a, a great machine. Depending on what you want to use it for, if you want to go into retro stuff, then it's got all the makings of a great little retro PC, but then the case ID would have been nice to have a slightly older case and probably a cheaper price. But anyway, there you go. So that is actually quite a well-ventilated case, as you can see. It's, it's not bad. It looks like it's got a, possibly a new power supply in it as well. Although I've just spotted from that picture, the one of the I.O. shields looks like it's not had the, uh, the flat bent over for one of the USB ports. Or is that a wireless dongle? I think that's probably a wireless dongle in there. So, yeah, I, I, I retract that statement. That looks all good. Although the keyboard and mouse they showed didn't look to be wireless. So maybe that is a dongle of some sort for something else. Who knows? Again, there's not a great description on there. The pictures are okay, but could be better. A bit of time spent on cable management would have made things a lot nicer. And uh, looking at the fact underneath on the on the uh, unit there, it looks like one of those screwdrivers with all the multi bits. So it's possibly someone who's a little bit handy with a screwdriver. Maybe they should have been a bit more handy with the uh, cable toys to make it look a little bit nicer. So that's about as much PC browsing I can deal with at the moment. Uh, hopefully you've stuck with us through this video and you've enjoyed some of it. Uh, maybe you agree with some of my critiques and some of my opinions. Maybe you don't. Let me know in the comments section below. I'd be really, really glad to hear what your thoughts actually are. Um, yeah, this uh, PC buying and PC components and all that kind of stuff is a very, very personal thing. Some people like to have a tidy PC and all that kind of stuff and have everything done just really meticulously. Other people is not bothered as long as it plays games and does what it's meant to do. So again. It's a, it's a very, very much a personal preference. But hopefully you've enjoyed having a look at these PCs with me. Again, if you're the owner of any of these PCs that have been listed on Facebook, then feel free to get in contact with me. And if, uh, if there's anything that I've said which is wrong or incorrect or you want to sort of validate or justify, then please feel free to do so. And if we do another one of these videos, which hopefully we will, then I will bring it up and make a full apology. Now, speaking of which, because I've re-recorded this end piece because of my failure with the webcam. Um, you'll probably notice on the £1,300 PC, I did mention that it seemed really overpriced. Now I did go to PC Part Picker, as I said I was going to in the video, and I had a look and I priced up the components which were as listed, or as best as I could, the, the nearest possible, and it did actually come up to about £1,200. Now that was excluding a power supply and a few other bits and pieces, um, but most of it was there and we did get to the £1,200 mark. So again, whether or not it's a fair price, being it's kind of technically used parts, although he does say or she does say that they are brand new parts and it was a build that was started. So maybe it is justifiable. I completely stand corrected. I thought it was way out, but after looking at it, it did seem to be uh, within that ballpark. So complete disclosure there. If I make a mistake, I'll quite happily own up to it and let you all know. I'm not an expert. I've just been doing this for a long time. And there's always things I can learn and always things I can get wrong, which I frequently do. So anyway, I've rattled on far too much. 
This has been a look at PCs on Facebook Marketplace. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to click on the subscribe button and the chime icon so you get the latest videos into your feed. Thanks for watching again. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.